Welcome to the video presentation of the graduation ceremony of Bay City Christian School. Although none of us began our high school careers thinking that this is the way that it was going to end, this is what God has ordained for us. So I welcome you to the presentation of this year's class, the class of 2020. Each of our students have had wonderful experiences that we'd like to share with you this evening. Kate, for example, dominated the painting division of the Wax Fine Arts Competition. Tanner scored over 1,200 points in setting a new career school record in basketball, while Caroline scored 37 points in one game to set her school record. Aaron became personal friends of the mayor, while Sam and Braden were instrumental in bringing the soccer championship back where it belongs here at Bay City. Timothy helped establish our underwater robotics program, and Seth was a quiet leader in our athletic program that was instrumental to all. So as we look at their achievements, let us begin with a word of prayer. Our Father, we thank you for your goodness and your love to us. We thank you for these students. I pray, Lord, that you will work in their lives as they go forward from their high school careers and they begin the next step of their journey. I pray, Lord, that you'll help them to make decisions that are honoring to you, that are glorifying to Christ, and that they'll honor you in all that they say and do. We thank you for this time that we have together tonight, and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. And I present to you the graduating class of Bay City Christian School, the class of 2020. My name is Seth Apps. I have studied here for 14 years. I have joined the Air National Guard and I will be leaving sometime next year. My name is Timothy Dubshinilov. I've studied here for four years. Moving forward, I want to study and earn a degree in engineering and specifically aerospace engineering. My name is Braden Bruner. I've studied here for 14 years. Moving forward, I plan to go to Georgia for college. My name is Caroline Ergish and I've studied here for four years. In September, I'm shipping out for the United States Air Force. My name is Aaron Fugate. I've studied here for seven years. Moving forward, I will attend UWGB in the fall. And after four years, I will obtain my degree and I will join the US Air Force to become an officer. My name is Tanner Hart. I've studied here for five years. Going forward, I plan on going to UW-Madison to study zoology and to play football. My name is Kate Gillette. I've studied here for nine years. Moving forward, I plan to attend UWGB to study art education. My name is Sam Gillette. I've been studying here for 13 years, and I plan to go and study welding at NWTC. I asked Coach Hagen to come and deliver your commencement address because I know the impact that he has had in your lives. Most of you have played soccer with him since middle school. The others, you've known him, seen him, and you understand that he is a great soccer coach. But more importantly that, he is a great role model because he cares about not, your, not just your skills, but he cares about your personal walk with the Lord. And with this heart, he comes to deliver your commencement address. Time. Nearly every valedictorian speech marvels at how fast high school went. I can tell you with certainty that time will never move any slower than it is for you right now. Remember where you were just six years ago? Most of you were headed into the seventh grade, worried about how you're going to mix in with the high school wing of the school and whether you'd be able to get in your locker that first day. Well, in that same amount of time, many of you will have completed college, started or completed work on an advanced degree, begun a career, gotten married, had kids, moved out of state, and the list goes on. Why is this important? Without putting a ton of pressure on you, I'm going to make a sobering statement. The choices that you make in the next 36 months will have a profound impact the direction of your life takes. This is a critical time for you. No longer are you a child, but you have yet to earn your stripes as an adult. The dynamic with your parents, which began changing sometime during the school year, will continue to change. Quickly, some of you will find yourselves with all kinds of freedom. How will you respond to this? This is a time when so many seem to disappear from Christian service. Some never to be heard from again, while others appear later still bearing the scars of their experience. I graduated from high school almost 40 years ago. It was a Christian school, a lot like this one, 
small class, pretty tight knit. Do you know how often we've been together as a group since that summer? Not once. No reunions, no common causes. Oh, there have been the we should all get together statements made, but not with a ton of actual follow up. Trust me, life changes. And in a simultaneously exciting and sobering way, it starts for you now. So with our time, I want to share four thoughts with you. In many ways, you are already familiar with these concepts, but my hope is that by putting them into some straightforward context, they will be something you can take from this charge and make permanent in your walk with the Lord. First, seek wisdom ahead of knowledge. Some of you will be heading into college this fall, while others may be off to the military. Still others may start working or even take a gap year. Regardless of the direction you take, you are going to find yourself with all kinds of people who have knowledge without necessarily possessing wisdom. The Bible mentions the word wisdom almost 500 times. In many cases, it is in the context of fearing or giving reverence to the Lord and understanding God's precepts. Any true wisdom has God as foundational to it. Are you all familiar with the world-renowned scientist Stephen Hawking? Professor Hawking could best be described by the phrase, scary smart. Part of what made Hawking's intelligence so intimidating is that his body was ravaged by ALS for over 50 years, potentially the longest known survivor of this disease. Beginning in 1985, he communicated through a voice synthesizer, making the disconnect between brain and body all that more apparent. His life work thought, sought to explain the origin and ending of the universe by tying Einstein's general theory of relativity to the Big Bang theory and black holes through quantum physics. I know, I don't understand what I just said either. With degrees from Oxford and Cambridge, England's most prestigious universities, he also received the highest honors of scientific recognition in the United States. In 2011, Professor Hawking had this to say about the prospect and existence of heaven. I regard the brain as a computer which will stop working when its components fail. There is no heaven or afterlife for broken down computers. That is a fairy story for people afraid of the dark. I submit to you that Stephen Hawking may have had more knowledge than our entire student body has, but he lacked the wisdom of many of your graduating kindergarten counterparts. Professor Hawking neither feared or loved God because he had no relationship with God. He is an extreme example of the pursuit of knowledge to the exclusion of wisdom, a pursuit in which he became so addicted to man-made knowledge that even allowing for God, which he was willing to do at one point in his life, became a fairy tale. Your faith will be challenged, I guarantee it, whether in a secular university, the military, even a Christian university, be prepared. Don't misunderstand me though. As Christians, it's important to be up to speed on issues that affect our freedoms and liberties. The last few months have brought about what may be permanent change in how we interact with one another. There are issues before our federal, state, and local governments that will have a lasting effect on us. Get informed and get involved. Vote. It is important. But remember, seek the Lord first. Second, seek service ahead of leadership. Sounds kind of backwards, doesn't it? Don't we need good Christian leaders? Isn't that what this institution is all about? Of course we want you to become leaders. The point, though, is what makes a good leader. In my view, it's someone with a servant's heart and a spirit of service. As coaches, one of the behaviors we try to model for you is a, is a servant's heart. I don't believe you will ever see a coach at Bay City who believes the program revolves around them. After all, our primary purpose is discipleship. From late high school through the early 20s, many people experience what I would gently call elevated self-absorption. It's a time of life, as I said earlier, where things are rapidly changing and developing. One of the first scriptures I ever memorized is found in Philippians 2. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of man. 
It is easy at this stage of life that you're about to enter to avoid service opportunities. After all, you don't have to. Mom and Dad aren't generally going to make you do things. Let me assure you, though, that you will miss out on tremendous blessings if you don't seek opportunities, and when given the opportunity to lead, to do so with a servant's heart. There's a common school of thought that leadership is grabbed, not granted. And while this can be true in some cases, this leadership is not long-lasting. When I interview people, I always look for the reaction I get when I inform them that our CEO worked out of a cube in the middle of our office for more than 25 years. His rationale? I'm not around the home office enough to need a private room. This same CEO has been known to change the paper toweling in the men's room, pound the steaks for our hospitality tent, and not only take orders for lunch, but actually go out and pick it up. This servant leader approach inspires loyalty and engenders trust. Third, seek solitude ahead of distraction. TikTok, Instagram, Messenger, YouTube, Snapchat, WhatsApp, Twitch. We live in a distracted world. A little more than 15 years ago, the concept of social media existed in Mark Zuckerberg's head in a Harvard dorm room. Today, it is the exception rather than the rule to find someone without a series of social apps they interact with many times daily. Some of you might even have your own channel. The other day, I observed one of my family members, who shall remain nameless with the TV on, earbuds in, Chromebook on a table, textbook off to the side, cell phone on top of the textbook, and a handheld video game on pause. When I asked this family member what he was doing, the answer was, you know what I'm going to say, right? Studying. Many of you are starting to get uncomfortable, not because of the chair you're sitting in or even the temperature or humidity of the room. You are uncomfortable because it's been nearly eight minutes since you've looked at your phone. Whose story did I miss? Or back when we had sports, who's getting traded or signed where? I wonder if Tanner liked my video. One of my favorite things about camping is the silence that can be found, whether in the woods, sunrise at a beautiful lake, or watching the embers of a dying fire late at night. Have you noticed that God can actually seem closer at times like these? Why is that? In part, because when we are still and quiet, we can be receptive to the ministering of the Holy Spirit. It's easier to pray, easier to be conversant with God. It is in times of solitude and silence that we can begin to discern the important from the irrelevant. Quiet moments with scripture, either in hand or memorized, can be a great time, an invaluable time, to help to learn God's will. So you're thinking, that's great. I don't even go camping. Believe it or not, you need this quiet time more frequently than even the most avid camper. So I am going to challenge you. Try getting up 15 minutes earlier, or at the risk of angering the night owls, stay up 15 minutes later, but make it quiet. Clear your head from the noise of the day. Don't look at your phone. Don't turn on music. Just be still. The psalmist tells us, be still and know that I am God. Fourth and finally, seek relationships above everything else. A wise person once told me, you will never get to the end of your career and say to yourself, boy, I wish I had worked more, or man, I spent too much time with my family. The lament of the person at or past retirement is where did the time go? Early on in your careers, some of you guys are going to feel tremendous pressure to be successful, to overachieve, to be amongst the top performers. I began my career at the firm of PricewaterhouseCoopers. You might recognize the name from the Academy Awards. PwC, as it's called, is part of the big four of international accounting firms. They boast a client list that of many of the largest corporations in the world. Their recruiting strategy was straightforward. Obtain the best and the brightest. But the underlying theme was let the overachievers and compete. And compete we did. We competed to be on the premier clients. We competed to who had, who had the most chargeable hours. We competed for early promotion. We competed on who had the most overtime. Now, mind you, we did not get paid for overtime. Those hours were simply for bragging rights. Now, is working hard and doing a good job wrong? Absolutely not. Is working hard, or playing hard for that matter, to the neglect of your family and relationships a slippery slope? You bet it is. 
particularly if you convince yourself that your time away from home is for the betterment of your home. God expects us to do what we engage in heartily as unto the Lord, that's for sure. But we need balance. If we neglect our relationships, all we will find is emptiness. A note of caution on relationships. I once read a plaque that said normal is someone you just don't know very well. Think about that for a minute. People will let you down. Friends, teachers, coaches, even parents or pastors. Do not allow your faith to be reliant on the behavior of others. Whether they are Christian leaders, role models, or peers, they may fail you, but they are not the author and finisher of your faith. Of course, the most important relationship to cultivate is the one with your Savior. God the Father reduced and Jesus echoed the entire law to this elegant concept. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. Relationships, beginning with your relationship with God, are absolutely critical. There you have it. Four straightforward concept, concepts that I believe are extremely important at this stage of your life. You are about to enter the uncharted waters of adulthood. Are you nervous? Are you cavalier? One of the realities and paradoxes of life is that experience is simultaneously the most powerful and painful teacher. However, each of the adults in your life, faculty, parents, pastors, and coaches have a lifetime of experience, much of it good. The life lessons part, though, is what we would like so much to be able to help share with you, to shield or prevent you from having to experience in order to learn. Life is short and you are at a crucial junction. The very first Bay City graduation I attended, a blonde haired teen teenager walked across the podium located in virtually the same spot as the current podium. He went on to become a pastor, a school administrator at Bay City, a church planner in Kewanee, Wisconsin. Others have followed in full-time Christian service since. Should the call come, will you be listening? There is little that would make me more happy than to see several of you in full-time Christian service as well. As you leave this relatively tiny Christian school in a relatively tiny Midwestern town, you have the opportunity to walk with the creator of the universe, the beginning and the end. And for that, I think we should all be thankful. May God bless each and every one of you. Thank you. The men and women who will come to this stage have faithfully completed the prescribed course of study from the Wisconsin Department of Public Instruction and the School Board of Bay City Christian School. It is great pleasure that we'll present to them their diploma. Braden James Bruner. Seth Allen Epps. Samuel Jason Gillette. Kate Candace Gillette.
Tanner Glenn Hart. Caroline Joe Ergish. Congratulations. Thank you mom and dad for always being there for me and thank you for giving me the opportunity to go to a Christian school. Mom and dad, thank you for giving me the chance to come to this school and, be, and to be able to grow more in the Lord here. I can say without a doubt, I am proud to be your son. Thank you mom and dad for always being there for me. Thank you for helping me with homework and cheering me on at games. You have always been a godly example throughout my entire life. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. I'd like to thank my mom for driving me everywhere and doing everything she has done for me. I'd like to thank my teachers for giving me education and teaching me everything they have. And I'd like to thank God for giving me this opportunity. Thank you parents for all that you did for me staying up late doing homework, to me taking the simple science school project to the extreme. Uh, there's a simple saying in Russian that goes, and it means if you struggle a little bit, if you put effort into something, you'll get something out of it. And that's a very good summary of my school life and I thank you parents for always pushing me to do better to try harder and to be a, a better person thank you thank you mom and dad thank you for your guidance patience encouragement and love throughout all these years thank you for the hours and hours of helping with homework school projects and especially math words cannot express my gratefulness for you for raising me into the woman I am today thank you mom and dad I'd like to thank my parents first for how they raised me and how throughout my years in school they didn't just teach me about school but about life and about God. I'm also glad they let me experience all different types of education but I'm glad I ended strong here at Bay City. And then second and lastly my siblings for being my best friends from the start and for standing up and loving me through the good and the bad. It has been a long and memorable road graduating from Bay City. Bay City has always been a part of my life since a very young age. From attending Sunday school as a kid to capturing the flag as a teen at youth group. I remember watching my sisters play sports here all through their high school careers and I always enjoyed cheering for them and being at the school with my friends. Bay City has always been like a second home to me. I've never walked through the doors of the church and school feeling unwelcome. They have always given me the support and wisdom in any situation I was in. It's hard to believe that after all these long years of high school I thought would never end, indeed came to a conclusion. It still shocks me that I will no longer be able to call myself a Bobcat anymore or win another sports championship for the school. But even through all my successes in getting to be where I am today, I could not have done it without the help of my family, friends, and the God who guided me the entire way. First, I would like to thank God for giving me the privilege to go to a private school such as Bay City. As a person growing up in church, it gets easy to take the Christian education for granted. But I'm so thankful I never had to doubt that the information I was learning ever contradicted God's word. I thank you every day for the blessings you put in the front of me, knowing full well I don't deserve them. It is a wonderful feeling knowing a God of grace, love, and rich in mercy is watching over me every step of the way. Next, I'd like to thank the school and my friends. The student body and the staff at Bay City are unlike any other. Because we were so small, it was easy to get annoyed with each other, but evidently it made us closer to each other. 
I've met some of the greatest mentors and leaders during my time at Bay City. Whether it was the motivation for us to learn in the classroom and keep good manners, or to never give up and push through the hard moments on the court and the field. I still laugh because no matter how much we acted like we hated being here, we still showed up the next day laughing and making memories. Through good days and dark days, we always push through together as a school, and it's something I will truly miss. So thank you teachers. Thank you for putting up with us kids in our crazy conversations and awkward moments. Thank you for putting in the time to make sure we have a Christian foundation to start our new lives upon. Thank you students for keeping Bay City's morality and mature conduct, always welcoming new people and helping those in need. I will dearly miss the people, the friends I made, and the unity they brought together for our school. Finally, I would like to thank my family. Our family is some would say a unique group, but nothing can be said to match the undying support and love from my sisters and parents. My sisters have offered to help me with any assignment I needed at any time and drive me to practice a thousand times over. Those were some long car rides at times, but I will always cherish the time I spent with both of them. To my parents, I can't think of anyone else who has devoted countless hours of preparing me for my future. Throughout all my schooling and sports career, my parents have been there to support every game and every event. Whether it's my mom racing me to the church for my spring showcase, or my dad rolling into school on his Harley for my soccer game. My parents sacrificed more for me than I'll probably admit. Yes, I'm pretty spoiled, but that's to be expected being the youngest. Thank you, Mom and Dad, for never giving up on me and always giving me someone to turn to. I couldn't ask for better parents. I could ask that we do a little less home construction work in the future, but hard work never hurt anybody. So thank you, Bay City. Thank you, Olivia and Ashley. Thank you, Mom and Dad. And most importantly, thank you, God, for this great school and family. Hello, I want to say congratulations. Congratulations to the 2020 graduating class of Bay City Christian School. You have worked hard to achieve this milestone. You have been driven to complete your studies and your coursework at Bay City Christian School. And you have succeeded because of the support and concern of others in your life who believe in you and because you have worked hard. We are in the midst of a unique and challenging time, no doubt in the midst of a time that feels strange and out of sorts. Lately, more has been expected of you than anyone could have imagined. Even just six months ago, it could not have been imagined, but you have risen to the challenge. This is certainly a time unimagined. Your high school years will be forever marked as a time before the COVID-19 pandemic. You will likely talk of those years as the time before the pandemic part of your life will be forever changed as it, and identified as before. Your last few months of high school and your graduation is during the pandemic, during the lockdown, during the quarantine. Your future will be after the pandemic. In the future, you will likely refer to your time as after the pandemic. And realistically, your after will not be the same as it would have been even a few short months ago but you are up to the challenge. You are up to the task of restarting your future, our future. You are enlightened and motivated. And as those who have graduated from Bay City Christian School have ahead of you, you too will make the world your own. You will join in helping us find a way defining what after the pandemic looks like. Though the pandemic has changed what your graduation ceremony looks like and maybe even some of your plans for next year, don't let it dampen your spirit. All who celebrate in your achievements have faith that you will go forward, achieve, accomplish, and change the world. I wholeheartedly believe that you can do anything you want if you work hard to achieve your dreams. You can and will overcome these tough times these obstacles, this adversity. And because you can and will overcome these obstacles, you can and will overcome the obstacles that you face as you go forward. Chase your dreams. The path to your dreams may be difficult and it may not look the way you want it to look. Clearly the path to your graduation did not end up the way you expected. But let this motivate you. Let this remind you that you can get there if you continue to work hard and continue to persevere. Go chase your dreams. 
As St. Ignatius of Loyola said, go set the world on fire. Congratulations to all of you. Hey, Bay City Christian School Bobcats. It's Jeff Myers from Summit Ministries. Mr. Phillips said that you're doing a virtual graduation. And I'm sorry you can't be there in person with one another to walk across the stage. But I just want you to know that as one of your teachers, having helped you with the Understanding the Times course, I wanted to say congratulations to you for your graduation. I, I just wanted to give you two quick verses. Hebrews 10.39, we are not of those who shrink back. And Philippians 3.14, that we press on to the high calling of Christ. Remember, whatever else happens in your life, you're a bobcat. We're in Colorado. We have bobcats in our yard. And I can tell you this, they are smart, they are fast, and they never give up. And that's what I'm going to be praying for you. Cheering for you. Have a great day. Hey, everybody. John Stone Street here from the Colson Center. Apparently, all of you that are graduating this year from Bay City Christian School, the home of the Badgers, Green Bay, Wisconsin, have been subjected, maybe even against your will, to some of uh, my daily breakpoint commentaries. Uh, I hope that has been an educational experience, even if it's been a bit painful uh, to hear my voice or to uh, read my words uh, so often. I want to say congratulations to all of you. What a crazy year to be a senior. What a crazy year to graduate. I graduated from a Christian school. Uh, I had doubled the number uh, of uh, fellow graduates as you do. We graduated with 16, but uh, we, we were really close. We, we had uh, uh, several years of a whole lot of memories together, and to have those so severely disrupted as you guys have uh, can't, can't be easy. Uh, but I'm proud of the work that you've done. I'm grateful that you go to a school that thinks that faith has something to do with the real world. And I want to challenge you with something that is true. It's true because the Apostle Paul described God this way uh, as he was talking to the Epicurean and Stoic philosophers in Athens. You can find it in Acts 17, where he says uh, that the God who created everything determines the exact times that people live in the boundaries of their dwelling place. This is true of you guys. You, uh, God, God wanted you to live in this time and in this place, and not in another time and another place. In every time and in every place, there are unique and distinct challenges, um, obstacles, um, particular realities, uh, challenges to the gospel, moral temptations, and everything in between. Uh, but the good news is, is despite the chaos and the craziness and the uncertainty and the instability of the moment, the truth of the story of the world hasn't changed. Christ is risen from the dead. Christ is the Lord. There's going to be a whole lot of people you encounter who think they're the Lord. They're not. Jesus Christ is the Lord. One day, Christ is going to make all things new. That's what we know. And in between here and there, as Paul said to the church of Corinth, we join in his work of restoration. So uh, kudos on accomplishing this amazing feat of graduating uh, from high school. It's not a small thing. And it is a, far less a graduation than it is a commissioning, a sending off to the next chapter. I don't know what your next chapter is. I don't know what the next chapter of our cultural moment is going to be. But I do know that Christ is risen from the dead, that Christ is Lord, that Christ will one day make all things new, and that he has called you to join his work of restoration. God bless you guys and congratulations.